Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, first, thanks for coming to my channel. I appreciate you stopping by. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, it helps get my channel promoted if you'd uh, either leave a comment or hit the like button or both. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you might do that, especially if you like the content. So um, Today I'm going to do uh, some water motif pieces. I'm going to make three different water motif pieces. I'm going to do um, a pair of earrings with some little blue topazes and kind of a teardrop shaped drop. And then I'm going to do a pendant where I'm going to do a back cutout that looks like some wave patterns. Uh, and it should be kind of wearable either uh, backwards or frontwards. I think it'll be reversible. For the third one, uh, I'm going to do something similar to the faux filigree uh, ring, which I did uh, quite a while back. Uh, it was one of my earlier videos. But it'll have a wave uh, pattern in the, on the top of it instead of the filigree that I put in the, in the other one. So. Before we get started, I want to thank my YouTube subscribers. You guys are great. We're about to pass 6,000 if we haven't already uh, while I was preparing for this video. So uh, thanks for that. Thanks for all the nice comments and the suggestions. I really appreciate that stuff. Um, I wanted to thank my patrons over on Patreon. You guys are paying for my premium content. And uh, I really appreciate your support. Uh, that helps to pay the bills, keeps me in supplies and things. So thank you for that. Uh, I really like the community over there, and I'm glad you've all signed up for it. So, let's get started on this video. So, this is my design idea book. Uh, in recent years, I've started sketching out everything I do before I do it. And I find these really useful. Um, they have a nice little dot matrix on them. So, it helps me to keep things sort of symmetrical, more than I could just freehanding stuff. But, uh, these are available in my merch store, if you're interested. Um, so I was coming up with some different designs for kind of water motifs and I have these little, uh, I have some pretty little oval, where's my little stone grabber thingy, there you are. I have some pretty little uh, oval uh, Swiss blue topazes, I think they're four by sixes if I remember. I thought I would put them in a, a little bezel setting and then connect it to a hollow kind of teardrop shape to represent water. It's got a nice water color and then it have kind of a teardrop shape or a raindrop shape and make some earrings out of those. That'll be the first thing we do. I pre-made a few things because we're doing three projects here. So um, like I made the bezels in advance for this for the faceted stone. So if you're interested in learning how to do a bezel for a faceted stone, I'll put a video link up here for one that'll show you how to do that. Um, for this other project at the end here, I made a big bezel that's just a, a standard uh, bezel setting for uh, a cabochon stone. And I'll put a link there for how to make a bezel setting for a cab. Um, so you don't have to watch me do those things on this one and it'll save us some time. Um, so the second thing I was going to do is this ring here. I guess I had it out of order in the intro. Um, I was going to uh, make a maybe 14 gauge uh, square wire circle here. And then I was going to make kind of a, a wave pattern that repeats itself going around in a circle. And maybe put a, a little ball, a silver ball in the center to connect them together. Once we do that, I'm going to actually uh, bend it around the ring mandrel a little bit so it's got a curve so it'll fit the finger and then we'll add a band onto it of some sort. And then um, for the third one we'll do this pendant and uh, like I said I've already made the bezel it's for this stone here and um, this is the the front side that I first looked at and I thought oh that would be pretty for for water kind of stuff. Um, then I turned it around the back and I was thinking for this one Um, I'll make a bezel for it uh, with a bottom that's relatively thick and I use 20 gauge uh, sheet and then I will cut out a kind of a wave like pattern uh, on the back and maybe even try to incorporate some of this white stuff like sea foam into the design so I kind of drew it so some of that would be visible uh, but not completely so it didn't dominate. So there should be blue peeking through and stuff. I was originally going to do a, a border all the way around it, but it's already getting pretty big. So I think I'm just going to put a little piece of square wire and a tube uh, bale on the top there. 
uh, I think that'll make for a good one that will allow you to flip it around front ways or back ways. So it's pretty on this side. It'll be have a kind of cool design on the back, hopefully, if it turns out cool. <laughs> I think it will, but we'll see. I'm going to start with the earrings. Let's, let's get those out. I already made uh, little step bezels. With bezel settings for faceted stones, you, you generally want to have an open back and a little lip on the inside for the stone to sit on. I think probably the easiest way would be to take some of this 16 gauge round wire that I think I'm going to use for this um, and do little projections coming out from three sides and then I'm going to do a long projection coming out from this side. And then I think I'll just make a teardrop shape and solder it to all of those and then we can cut them off to the right length so it fits perfectly. It might be nice to have had some teardrop shape uh, little blue topazes but unfortunately I didn't have any. so. I'm going to go with the ovals. If you haven't seen one of my videos before, I use hard silver sheet solder for almost everything. And I use a spray-on flux called Mighty Flux. I'm going to cut some little tiny pieces off of here. They don't have to stick out very far from the three sides. So, But first, let's file the end flat. got to place these around here and I'm going to pick solder them on there. Pick soldering uh, is one of those skills that I found uh, moved me up a, a level as far as what I can do and so I would recommend learning how to do it. It allows you to pick up a little piece of solder, touch it right where you want it and get it to flow once you've kind of mastered how to control the heat and everything. So that might be worth checking out. I'll put a link right up there for you. All right. Mostly I just want to try and get these pretty centered. Of course when I put a little flux on here they're all going to move around. <laughs> Close enough. When I add the solder, I can move them around a little bit if I need to. Just let me cut a few little tiny pieces. They're pretty close to the scale, maybe just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to keep it relatively close to what I drew here. We 
use a little bit of 14 gauge square maybe. Let's see how that looks. I'm not sure of the scale, but I think maybe this might be a good size for the bottom. So let's see. I kind of like that. I kind of like that size. I'm going to cut these off kind of like this. Try to get this one pretty symmetrical. Spread them open a bit. Straight up and down. So they'll meet up nicely against the side of that wire. I think the best way to do this would be to use a sharpie. Color the tops of these here. Hold this in place how I like it. And then on the inside of this, scratch a mark so I know where that should be cut off at. That looks pretty good. Good enough for me. Let's solder those guys together. Make sure everything's sitting down flat. We don't want them to turn out wonky. <laughs> just dropped right where it was supposed to go. That was funny. Usually it drops and rolls off the table and lands in my lap. Last step on these before I pickle them is I'm going to put some little rings at the top to hook the ear wire onto. And I made these out of 18 gauge for these ones. And I think I, I wrapped it around a little brass rod that I keep laying around here. So, so let's inadvertent musical instruments. I think those are kind of cool looking. I'm going to throw those in the pickle and we get started on the next piece. So for the ring, I said we're going to have a, a circle made out of 14 gauge square, which I pre-made. And then when I was prototyping, I made this in advance so we get kind of a, an idea. I might do it the other direction. I don't know. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more of these. I was going to do four, but I think it's only going to be able to fit three probably comfortably. We'll have to see how it works out.
they're supposed to look like little waves, kind of. So. All right, so let's make a few more of these. This is 14 gauge square. This was once 14 gauge square, but I ran it through the rolling mill and it flattens it out. And it makes for a nice, uh, if you want something to look a little narrower, but still have some structural strength. So I use that quite a bit anymore. But to get these nice points, I need to file the ends a little bit at an angle and then solder them together. So I'm going to kind of file it at a, kind of a steep angle like that. I usually make a bend in these so they'll stay on their side. squeeze them together just a little bit to try and get that that corner uh, pretty tight. But then I'm gonna I usually grab the outer one. Yes. I'm gonna try and sharply bend that inner one a little bit. Depending upon how tight of a curl you want it to have. Yeah. Then we can pull this one around. That's surprisingly close. <laughs> Let's see if I can't just get them to solder together right in the middle there. Okay, just like before, I'm going to make it purple. Marking right on the inside edge there. Hopefully that should allow me to cut them off pretty close. So because that uh, squished 14 gauge square wire is uh, a little bit taller here, I'm going to have to file this flush. Alright, so I think the next step I'm going to do is I'm just going to make kind of a simple band. 
I want this ring to be a nine, let's say. Let's go ahead. Normally for a nine, if I'm just making a band, I would add about an extra eighth of an inch. However, this is going to become part of the band because I'm going to curve it as I curve the, the band itself. So, you can deduct that distance and from here to here should get us a, about a size 9 when we solder it all to the end of this. So, so let me figure out what I'm going to make the band out of. Be right back. So you can see I cut a couple of pieces of 12 gauge square here and I measured them to about that length there. And then I, I bent them out, oh I don't know, five millimeters in or so. And I think I'll solder those together and then I'll add these to the sides of this and make it into a, a ring shape. So plentiful with my solder. I don't want to have any you know, spots where it shows through. So now I have to uh, file the ends of these so they match that nicely. If you put too much pressure on that solder joint there, it's going to be difficult to not break it. So I'm trying to bend it mostly in the band here and up here. All right. So let's solder that. I'll use a third hand this time probably, just to kind of suspend it. that out after I pickle it and polish it. So we can get to work on the third piece. Okay, here's that bezel I made in advance. And uh, the only things that are notable of this are that I used a thicker back for it than I normally would. 
because I'm going to be cutting out part of it and I want it to be really uh, pretty stiff and, and strong. And normally I use 26 gauge which is pretty thin and that would make for some floppiness back here that I don't want. Um, I traced out the outside border where I want there to be at least a little lip sticking inwards and so I'll cut, that'll be the as far towards the edge as I'll cut and then I transferred the basically sketched out this uh, similar pattern that I drew up here um, so I'm gonna go over to the saw I'm gonna have to drill some holes I need to put a hole somewhere in this one this one this one somewhere in here somewhere in here and somewhere in here so I'm gonna need to make some little center punch dimples and then drill a little starter hole in each of those so I can feed the saw through it so that's where we'll go next welcome to my messy sawing area <laughs> I'm gonna put a little uh, small drill bit in here on my dremel And I already put a little dimple in there with the center punch. fed it through one of those holes there. Put a little wax on it for lubrication. Let's get started. Sawing has never been my strong suit. I've been practicing a lot lately. I'm kind of starting to like it a little more. Really didn't love it at first, mostly because I wasn't very good at it. file there but overall I'm pretty pleased that's one of my better sawing jobs <laughs> so all right let's get back to work I cut myself a little piece of tubing this is oh I don't remember what size it is <clears throat> I think it's about five millimeters it's pretty close to five millimeter outside diameter and I cut myself a little piece of square wire I found the center of the top of this thing that we just cut out and I'm going to solder this right up against there, hopefully centered, and then I'm going to file it flat on the top and then I'm going to solder this up against that and that'll be our bail. The reason I wanted this uh, up here, mostly, well, two reasons. One, to separate this a little bit from the bezel itself. And also because since I have a slight curve here, it'd be nice if I had a flat surface that I could solder this to. And so I'm just going to file the top of this flat. So 
so probably the easiest way to solder this on would be to just sweat a little bit of solder on the side of the tube. We can just butt it up against there. Throw that in the pickle, and the next time uh, you see me, we'll have some finished products to look at. Sorry about the polishing hair. <laughs> so here's the pair of earrings. Whoops. I think they came out quite nice. Little teardrops or raindrops. All right. Then we got a. Wave ring, sort of. <laughs> At least that was my intention. And then we got this uh, pendant here, which is very pretty from the front, and I think you could also wear it from the back as well. So, all right, I will take some better pictures and put those at the end. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the water motif pieces. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, and I'd love to have you leave a comment as well. Um, if you enjoyed this one, make sure to check out my playlist section. I've split all of my videos into various categories, beginning, intermediate, advanced, as well as uh, by type, like rings, uh, pendants, bracelets. So it helps you to find what you're looking for. And there's a lot of content here, so I think you'll probably find some things that you're interested in. Once you do view a few of those, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you're interested in supporting the channel in any other ways, uh, check the video description. There's links to some various places, my Patreon, uh, my website where you can buy jewelry, or even my merch store. Thanks again for watching. Uh, take care. Happy silversmithing.